Hello everyone, it's Linda here from Highly Sensitive and how are you today? It's such a beautiful day here. It just makes you want to smile and you have a good day, doesn't it? We're here today to talk about how to let go. Or maybe we could call it the art of letting go, if you like. <laughs> Recently I received, this is what brought this all to mind, Recently I received the absolute bliss of a herbal wrap treatment and it was during the process I kept hearing Dominique, the beautiful lady who does this thing, just say let it go. I mean she was rubbing beautiful herbs into my body and just saying let it go and I caught that and since then I've noticed the letting go of many other small feelings and irritations which just led me to remember that, well, you know, any process has layers, huh? Anyway, another one of those layers goes. And that happens with all of us because those layers only go when there's an understanding of the shift, the need to shift. Not necessarily in the front of your brain, in the conscious part of your brain, but definitely in agreement with your inner being, with your inner library. And some are quite significant others just more subtle or just seemingly not significant where you've let go of something else <clears throat> excuse me but there's a a trailer onto that one which goes at the same time and um, I know we find that when we do any process I know I've been working the refresh process alongside the assisting frequencies of the Anahata codes and some of the things that get shifted are not even asked about, not even intuited at the time to be helped, but they are part of the bundle, so they go at the same time. And that's pretty much what letting go does mean. It's not just about the big stuff. It's about, well, I suppose being prepared for a start. And it's about knowing your body and yourself well enough to be able to sense when held in stress is making its impact on you. And whether it's yours, whether it's not, letting that anonymous stress go, filling it up with love and letting it go. So, I mean, I know when, when you're highly sensitive, we often gather the stresses floating in the breeze and um, that, that comes down to you now knowing more about who you are, knowing whether it's yours or not. Um, those are... Oh, that was just a big one for me to learn. Is this mine? And when it's not, don't buy into it. Just, I mean, I know I read about or and heard about letting it flow through you, and I'm like, oh, that picture didn't work for me. So um, I use my pouring love mechanism. That's what I've shared. Um, what I do with pouring love is is a beautiful process, and because it was so simple and just a wonderful thing to happen. I put it up for free so that my clients and you could go back to it if you wanted to. I'll be putting the link to that. It's just on a um, landing page of my website and the link is there below. So have a look below when you've finished. And the, oh, it's just such a freeing up method. Have a look. You've just got to sign in with your email address so that I know that you're not another spamming computer. And yeah, so when you're letting go, there isn't any need to label it. We like to because we're humans and we've been taught that quantifying is a very important thing to do. But it's not really. Just feel the feeling and let the whole lot go. And like I said, if you want to, just fill any perceivable gaps left behind with universal love. Pour it in. It always works. Works for me anyway. So why is letting go important? Silly question really, isn't it? The stuff you carry around with you, well the negative stuff's toxic and it just, well I always get a picture of somebody wading through dark fudgy muck and then when you let it go it's like lighter, the steps are lighter and it, the going gets easier. So, but on that point, letting go is not just about negative stuff either. It's about positive stuff as well. If you're spending too much time, too much thought time on anything in particular, then let it go so that it can settle into your world naturally and not forcefully. 
I mean, sometimes we're so attached to the positive outcome of a positive feeling and it makes us happy that we picture it a lot. But don't. Once you've sent it out there, if you've got to think about it at all, think about the feeling of the having of it and it's beautiful. Not the getting it, but the feeling that you'll have once you're there. And that way it will come naturally into your world. I wanted to tell you a bit about our refresh process because it works really well here and it's cool. It's a process I've been using for some time now with clients and friends with just awesome feelings of newness and awareness coming from it. And usually we work through the process and then follow up by activating the assisting frequency Anahata codes. And they work so beautifully with your heart library. They help us let go without seeing or knowing. And I'm personally attached to that outcome. I love not having to dive into my past and relive it. It's not something that is part of who I am. But I'll tell you a bit more about this at the end because I have um, a special offer for you based around Refresh. Don't be scared, it's not scary. Anyway, so why do we have difficulty letting go? In some cases, especially if you are a highly sensitive being, you're trying to fix something or even someone who isn't wanting to be fixed. And other times it's because you have such love in your heart for them or, or for the moment that you see letting go as stopping that loving. And it's not true because letting the feeling go, letting the effort go, means that you've allowed it to be. And in allowing it to be, you're not envisaging it because when you concentrate on something, you're still buying into it. So when you just send the love to envelop it and let it be, you are enabling it to become whatever is next. And you know it's that person's journey. That's one of the hardest things our sensitive beings have to get. It's their journey. So letting go isn't about not loving, but it's a way of clarifying your love and stopping you from trying to heal another instead of lovingly supporting them. So how can you deal with letting go? One of the main aspects is realizing what makes you hold on to stuff. It's personal to you. To see and feel how your body responds to this holding on. An area I've come to realize is about how much clutter I bring around me when I'm feeling loaded down with, with emotion or whatever it is on the day. Overwhelm, whatever. And it might be important stuff, but clutter's clutter. And one of the my points is my desk, my office, where I'm sitting right now. I have no clutter around me at the moment because I'm in a beautiful, clear space. But there will come a time where I put scraps of paper somewhere and don't handle them. They've got notes on them, you know. And the bits of paper on my desk just get bigger and bigger. And then I'll put a book on top of them and yeah, the piles and around and I have to move it to even just get to the keyboard. So then there comes a point where I notice I'm hanging on to stuff or it's in my way or seriously Linda just deal with it that kind of moment. So I pile them all together and deal with it. Sometimes they're done. Sometimes I just shred them. I'm one for making notes on scraps if you hadn't gathered that by now. And I just I do I deal with it. Sometimes the note that you've held on to for more than a month is no longer pertinent. It's done its job. But other notes can be reordered, popped into your calendar, rescripted, sorted. Just they'll come about once you put your mind to clearing the clutter and seeing. So the main theme here is to, for me, it's to clear my desk of the unknown because clutter becomes hiding stuff. So where's your clutter? Get to know where your clutter is. And then that helps you to look and learn at how you hold stress and clutter inside you. So how do you figure that one? Because that can be disguised quite easily in your body. Um, my thought for you here is when you're supposedly relaxing, have, remember this, at a particular time, when you're supposedly relaxing, reading 
watching a movie, playing an e-game, whatever, you should by all accounts have a really relaxed body, shouldn't you? So just when you're in the middle of something like that, have a look at your body and feel how relaxed it really is. And if you've got tension in your body, there's a good chance you might have, it's a sure sign of holding on to something. And again, don't quantify it unless you really need to. Um, I mean, a, a story I have for you is when I play um, games, and I really enjoy playing games, I could be addicted. So I have time spans and I never buy lives, you know, all of those things. I have a little program in myself that says, mm -mm, this is enough. And I was looking at myself, I was doing exactly what I told you just then, and I noticed a low level of tension in my tummy. And I just played with it for a minute and I realized that it linked back to my childhood. I loved reading and so I probably didn't do anything except read. If I had a good book, I disappeared into it. I could imagine I was being told off because I got a picture of myself reading. I thought, right, okay, that's just silly. I don't have to hold on to that. So I did what I'm going to tell you to do now. Deep breathing into the tense spot that you've got and just feel the relaxation. Pull universal love into your breath and watch how much difference this makes to your posture and your relaxedness. And that takes me back to the pouring love free process. That's the one I talked to you about earlier. Just go and have a listen to it. It's amazing. You probably only need to hear it once. It's not something you need to have. Once it's in you, you get it. So I don't, I don't want you to make it a ritual. Just make the ritual of not having um, tension in your body. And I wanted to tell you a bit more about Refresh, just to finish up here. It's just been one of the best ways to bring a being into the here and now, to bring you into the hearing now, and then using the assisting frequencies, the Anahara codes, to clear your forward movement. I've, I've had um, physical workshops recently, and I'm looking to doing digital workshops in a beautiful digital lounge that we all make together. And I will um, put more information on that on the site. So have a look when you're listening to this because it'll probably be up. Because the people who have attended sessions with me and just workshops, here's a couple of the comments. One lady says, if you're ready and open to receive, then this workshop is fantastic to do. Isn't that beautiful? Another this session, blah, 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 sorry, <laughs> this session opened my heart to receive my guidance and it was fully confirmed by the codes we activated. And that just totally outlines what happens. It's beautiful. Another lady said, I came away from our session feeling fully connected. Thank you. So if you are interested in receiving a refresh session with a view to a new perspective of your journey, then I'm offering an introductory special here and now. This special includes us together using the refresh process and then intuiting your own assistant frequency codes to further clarify your next step, whatever that is to you, whatever your inner being needs to highlight. So the refresh booking page is going to be below. Have a look at that. And when you are um, going onto the site, have a look for the digital lounge if that's something else that you want. Just going back to what we said, letting go is personal to you. It's personal to your inner being and your heart library. Don't push it. Just work with it in peace and love. And go with it. Just remember now, you are unique. You're wonderful. You're here for a special purpose. Don't search out that purpose. You are living that purpose right now. Right now, as you are, who you are right now. Lots of love. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.